Creating virtual math lessons can sometimes make you feel like a first year teacher. So today I'm going to share my three quick tips that'll make your math lesson planning for online learning less stressful. Welcome to another 10 minutes with the Ignited Teacher. My name is Michelle AK the Ignited Teacher. And if you're new here, it is my goal for my YouTube channel to help teachers like you to effectively manage their classrooms and to increase student achievement. So when you're creating your math virtual lesson, it can seem to be a daunting task. That's because we're so used to creating lessons with paper and pencil resources. But with students transitioning to online learning, it's hard to create virtual lessons effectively when students don't have paper and pencil in a lot of cases with the whole coronavirus outbreak. So I'm going to give you three tips that can help you to plan your lessons effectively to where you don't feel like you're reinventing the wheel and you're a first year teacher. So the first tip is to shorten your lessons. So in the real world, normally our lessons will run about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on where you're teaching. So in high school, I have 90 minute blocks and my lessons are not 90 minutes, but it's broken down into different sections. So if you are using platforms like Edpuzzle and Nearpod, which are presentation of content platforms, you want to keep those limited to eight to 10 minutes because you have to take into consideration the student screen time and the effect that looking at a computer has on the student's eyes. So the second tip for creating virtual math lessons is to choose your edtech platforms wisely. Now there are a lot of edtech platforms that are really great, but all edtech platforms are not created equally. This means that some of them are more for text-based subjects such as science and reading, and some of them are just not good for math. But if you're using Edpuzzle, Nearpod, Flipgrid, those are all excellent choices. But because of the quick shift from paper and pencil to virtual learning, it's hard to get students to learn new platforms. So my suggestion is choose platforms wisely that are easy to use and kids can learn them very easily. Like Flipgrid is an excellent choice for student engagement. Then you choose another edtech platform. How am I going to present this lesson to these children? Now I say keep it down to a minimum of three because you, especially with the littles, you have parents who have to first learn the platform and then teach it to the children. And you're not there to walk them through the actual lesson. So it makes it a little difficult. So choose your ed tech platform very wisely and make it easy on yourself and your parents and the students. So my last and final tip is to show not tell. So a lot of teachers in their math classes are used to talking a lot and less illustration. So in your videos, whether you're using Edpuzzle, Nearpod, or even if you are having a live session with your children, you definitely have to show and not tell. So for me, my goal is to keep my lessons to a minimum of eight minutes because I know that there are going to be some start and st start and stopping points within the lesson, which makes the lesson longer. So because we're not there to answer questions and teaching kids at their independent level is different than teaching children at their instructional level. The instructional level the teachers are there to guide the students through the frustration of learning new content. 
But here's the thing in the virtual world, you are not there. So the kids have to have enough resources and enough illustrations to help them get through the frustration of learning new content because you may not be available. It may be one o'clock in the morning because my high school students are up doing work and you're not there. And what happens is the student disengages and until that student can actually connect with you or someone who can actually guide them through the lesson. So my third tip is to definitely show more, not tell, because you're not there when the students and the parents are working independently on these lessons. So I hope that you have found these three quick tips helpful with planning for your virtual math lessons. And in the comment section below, tell me what are some of your biggest challenges with planning for your online learning.